Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, finally, we're going to continue with the Prophet series today with Prophet Nuh, the first Rasul. All right, guys, I kept you waiting for long enough, so we're going to start with the video in a second. Just do me the favor. If you enjoy the Prophet series, leave us a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. With no further ado, let's have a look. After a thousand years minimum, or several thousands of years Is of generations, church choir? it took the Iblis that long to finally influence Sounds like the children choir. of Adam to commit their first act of shirk. And the shirk took over the world. Now this was the point Shouting when again. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down the first Rasul, Nuh alayhi salatu wa salam. 950 years calling to Allah Brother. subhanahu wa ta'ala Oh people say la ilaha illallah Oh people leave the worship that you are worshipping and turn to Allah azza wa jal It was a prophet and it was a messenger And he is from the ulil azmi bin al rusul from the top five prophets and messengers Called to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Day and night In the open and close Individually and groups, 950 years, alayhi salam, called to Allah nonstop. They did not want to listen. They wanted to carry on in their ways. And so we opened up the doors of the heavens with gushing water. The gates of the heavens just open and rain will come down. The flood. Not like a normal tap, but a big explosion just came down of water. Allah azza wa jal exploded from the grounds, springs with water coming out. The water of the sky and the water of the earth met together on a divine command. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And as in previous videos, this is truly what we can observe. There have been cataclysmic events, floods have been documented, reported, ice ages and what not. Those catastrophes have happened and they've been reported upon in different civilizations. This is a fact, it's not just a story of the ancients. He was Noah. The son of Lamik, the son of Mitusholach, the son of Khanuch, who was Idris alayhi salatu wasalam. Methusalem, who lived over 900 years. Idris is the father of the grandfather of Nuh. So Nuh is his fourth grandson to Idris alayhi salam. Mm. Nuh was the first messenger of Allah to the people of the world. And he is one of the five Ulul Azm. Ulul Azm are the greatest five of the Anbiya of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, he's one of them. The other four are Sayyidina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Ibrahim, Musa and Isa. Peace be upon them all. At the time of Nuh Alayhi Salam, Nuh was the only Muslim worshipping Allah Azza wa Jal alone at that time. Everyone beside Nuh is a mushrik. So he said to them directly, O oh my people, worship Allah alone. You have no deity besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Nobody worthy of worship besides Hence Allah Islam. subhanahu wa ta'ala. He told them, See you not how Allah has created seven heavens one above the other, and has made the moon a light therein, and made the sun a lamp, and Allah has brought you forth from the dust of the earth. Afterwards, He would return you into the earth and bring you forth again on the day of resurrection. And Allah has made for you the earth widespread that you may go about the ring and broad roads. He was dealing with a very, very stubborn people. There were a people who had been blessed with wealth and they had been blessed with uh, good progeny. They had been blessed with a lot of good crops. They didn't listen. And this was the reason why they, be they became so stubborn because everything was, everything was working. In fact, when Nuh salam came and started to preach, after he preached, that's when these things stopped. So there was a drought. And when the drought mm. came, they said, Why is this? All these years, we've been fine with good rain, good crops, good, good survival, 
right? And now this man comes along and everything gets damaged. So this man is the crook. He's the one that we need to kill or throw out of this community. They blame he told his people, I fear over you the punishment of that day, the great day. I fear that a punishment will overtake you. If you believe in this message, Allah will give your crops back. Why? He's talking to a civilization that is, that is running on crops. Then he said to them, Allah will give you cattle back. He said to them, Allah will give you crops back. And he said to them, Allah will give your children. He will put blessings in your children. And then he said, Oh my Lord, I called my people during the day and night. Every single hour and minute of the day and night. Oh Allah, then I called them in the open. I called them in clothes. I called them in the day. I called them at night. I went to their houses. I went to their gatherings. I spoke to them individually. I spoke to them in groups. And my call to them only made them run away from me. He would be giving them dawah. He would be speaking to them. And they would put their fingers in the ears. Or they would cover themselves with their clothes. And they would be arrogant and proud. If you are speaking to someone. And he starts putting his fingers in his ears. And he covers himself up and he acts arrogantly towards you. Will you able to continue to talk to him? Nuh was doing this for 950 wow. years. 950 years. Just a quick interruption up until now. The story is identical to the story that I grew up with in Orthodox Christianity. He's making dawah there is night no and day. Publicly and privately. And the more dawah he gives, the worse the situation would become. And the more animosity would become between him and his people. And the people are not listening to talk with. He is speaking to closed ears. But he had patience. The chiefs from amongst the people, they said, you are astray. This man the only main difference here, of course, is the red threat of Islam yet again. Because here Nuh gives dawah and he calls them back to the worship of God alone. However, within the Christian context, there is no emphasis on worshiping God alone. The emphasis in the Christian context is that those people are sinners and they should return to God. They should let go of their sins and return to the good life, so to speak. However, yet again, here we do have the red threat. Those people committed shirk and they have to return to worshipping God alone. He's astray. Don't listen to him. He That's said, oh my people, I am not astray. I am a messenger from the Lord of the worlds. I am only conveying to you the messages of my own Rabb and I am giving you advice. Ask forgiveness from your Lord. Verily, he is oft forgiving. And listen to the benefits of istighfar. He will send rain to you in abundance and give you increase in wealth and children and bestow on you gardens and bestow on you rivers. They went on to argue with Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam. They say, you're just like a man. You're, ju you're just a man like ourselves. Yeah, they're again, special same story. In you. you claim to be a messenger. You claim yeah. to be a prophet. But we see you just like us, an ordinary individual. You're drinking like us? You're eating like us? They said if Allah wanted to send somebody down to us, he would have sent an angel. Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam, he told his people, Oh my people, I am not telling you that I am an angel. And I am not telling you that I own the treasures of the earth. And I am not saying that by following me, you will become loaded. And I don't know the unseen. So don't come and ask me what's behind the wall. And don't come and ask me what are these people going to have tomorrow. I am not <laughs> claiming to know the unseen. The next thing that they did now this is actually very reminiscent of the story of Prophet Muhammad, may peace be upon him, because people came to him as well and said, why did the Quran not come from the heavens? Why do we need you? You are just a person that we know of. You're just a common human being out of our own town. Why would we trust you? Nuh That's the same pattern. They thought they can bribe a Prophet of Allah. Keep quiet. We'll give you money. How much do you want? Oh my people. That happened to Prophet Muhammad as well. I'm not going to ask any recompense from you. I don't want money for what I am teaching you. My reward is from none but Allah. It's been narrated that the maximum narration says that the followers of Nuh in 950 years did not exceed 80 people. For the call of 950 years, 24-7 work only gets 80 people. Some narrators wow. says even 10 people. 
80 people in 950 years you can work it out in a hundred years how many one or two Allahu Akbar and this is an example for every da'ya that when you call to Allah don't expect the whole world to follow you one day and night remember Noah 950 years for 80 people and this is a prophet this is a messenger who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had chosen to be the best of people in this world and the best of people in the hereafter and accepted 80 followers. Who were we compared to Nuh alayhi salam? Who were these 80 people? What were their backgrounds? What were their positions and status in the community or in society? This is different from the story that I've been told. In the Christian context, he had no followers whatsoever, but all the other people were forsaken. They weren't popular people. They weren't famous people. They weren't people who had high positions, such as the chief of a, of a tribe or the leader of a, of, a, of a nation. So the leaders, the wealthy and political leaders, influential men of the society, they came to Nuh and they said that We do not see, you know, rich, powerful people following you. Instead, we see the poor, destitute people following that you. That is a sign of Why prophecy. Why should we follow you? It's always when the poor people that fall the, the prophets. lowest of our society is with you. Yep. You have to kick out those weekend slaves, otherwise we're not going to listen to you. He said, these people appear to be low in terms of worldly standings, but you don't know their hearts. You don't know their hearts. Allahu Akbar. They are pious. Allah knows their heart. Who will support me? Who will stand by me? If I kick these people away and Allah Azza wa Jal will want to punish me, who will stand by me? Can't you think? They said, if you cease not, if you don't stop Onu, you will surely be among those stoned to death. We're going to stone you to death. Look at these threats. What did Nuh alayhi salatu wasalam do? He knew Allah was with him. Not a day did he raise his hands to say, Ya Allah, destroy them. He kept on saying, Ya Allah, guide my people. He is alone against yes. all of the society and he did not tired and he never gave up. Who gave up? His people. They told Nuh, you have been debating with us and this debate has been prolonged. This is taking too long. Can you please end it and bring the punishment of Allah that you said? Subhanallah, look at the sabr of the Nabi. He never gave up and the whole society won against the whole and they lost. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and it was inspired to Nuh. None of your people will believe except those who have believed already. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala closed the doors of Tawbah. Nuh made his dua after 950 years of patience. He finally made a dua against his people and he said, O oh Allah, leave none of the non-believers on the face of the earth. Nuh said, if you leave them, they will mislead your servants and they will beget None but wicked disbelievers. Nuh salam. There's a severe difference here as well. I do not remember in the Christian context Noah praying to God for the elimination of the people. Quite the opposite till the very end. Noah tried to save his people. Plus we responded immediately to our worshipper. Allahu Akbar. Allahu Akbar. We are the best of those who respond, Allah says. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Do not be sad because of what they used to do. Do not grieve over them. And you know why this was said? Because the wife of Nuh والسلام, did not accept the message. The son mm. of Nuh والسلام, did not accept the message. They That's were all from very the different as well. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to Nuh. Yet again, as I said, there were no followers in the Christian context. It was just Noah's family. So Noah and his wife and his children and then a pair of every animal living. That's it. Nobody else. To build an ark, a ship. Nuh والسلام, asked Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to save him and his family and the believers. Allah promised him that he will save him and his family and the believers. Yeah. But he said, except those who disbelieved. Allah ordered Nuh السلام, to go up to a mountain to build the big ship. And Jibreel السلام, came down teaching Nuh how to build the ark. So Nuh started constructing the ark. And Nuh stayed 100 years building the ark. So Jibreel is to tell him how to prepare the wood. He tell him to carve the wood and make it curved so that it can sail easily and it can float. And he told him 
to use nails and wood. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commands him to build three decks upon the ship. The lowest deck was for animals. The okay. deck above that, that's the middle deck, was for the human beings, passengers. And the topmost deck was for the birds. At that time, there wasn't many trees in his area. So Nuh alayhi salam will plant that tree, wait for it to grow. And then Nuh alayhi salam will cut that timber and put it into the ark. 100 years until it became a massive ark. How massive? How big? Some of them say it was 80 yards long. Some of them say 100. And one extreme narration says a thousand yards, but minimum 80 yards long. And they agree that it was at least 30 yards high. It wasn't an ark or a ship that's open. I don't know closed. where those details come from. It was a big ark. It was going to rain, so close it. As he was constructing the ship, whenever the chiefs of his people would pass by, they would make fun of him. They mocked at him. Oh no, did you become a carpenter after your prophet? We thought you're a prophet. And they'll mock him. And then they told him, Oh no, you build a ship in the middle of the desert over a mountain. Uh, there's something wrong with you. There is something wrong with you. No, told them, if you mock at us, so do we mock at you likewise for your mocking. And you will know who it is on whom will come a torment that will cover him with disgrace and on whom will fall a lasting torment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he gave him a sign. When that sign takes place, take you and your family and your followers and from every, from every animal, different genders, male and female, and go into the ark. Yet again, identical. And salam waited for that sign. And that sign is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said. When water starts to come out of the tanur, then that's the sign for you to go to the ark. Tanur is the old oven. And Nuh alayhi salam waited for that sign. And one day, water exploded out of the oven. So Nuh knew it's What oven? Fine. He called upon his followers and went to the ark and in front of the ark all the animals from the different genders were waiting in line to enter the ark subhanallah Allah's miracles from every animal male, female was waiting outside the ark and Nuh alayhi salam went with his 80 of his followers and his family and his wife and Nuh had a non-believing wife she passed away then Allah azza wa gave him a believing wife and he had four boys. He had Ham, Sam, Yafith, and Kanan. Three of those, Sam, Ham, Yafith, were Muslims, and Kanan was a non-believer. When he went on the ark, what did he say? And that's what we have to remind ourselves of yet again, what the word Muslim means. Because if we talk nowadays to Christians or Jews or anybody else, they don't understand what the people giving dawah here mean at all when they say that those people were Muslims. A Muslim is someone that submitted their will to God, somebody that believes in one God alone. And this is why he says the Muslims and the non-believers. That is the main distinction here belief versus non-belief bismillah it's important to understand so it was till then came our command and so we opened up the doors of the of the heavens the springs of the earth started gushing with water and rain started falling from the sky the water of the sky and the water of the earth met together on a divine command the waves picked up this ark and knew he's seeing his son in front of his eyes he is telling his son Come and join us. Oh my son, embark with us and don't be with the non-believers. What did his son reply in arrogance? He said, he said, Dad, I'm going to go to a high mountain and it will save me from the water. His father told him, There is nothing that can save you on this day except the mercy of Allah. He refused. Waves separated between them and he drowned. Imagine that is standing neutral. and you see your son in front of your eyes. And the waves are separating between you and him slowly. And in front of your eyes, you know that that's the end of your son. What a difficult situation. And Nu called upon his Lord and said, O oh my Lord, 
verily my son is of my family and certainly your promise is true and you are the most just of the judge Allah replied immediately to him and said to him he said I know he's not one of your family why in the earlier verse Allah said to him I will save your family except the ones who disbelieved don't mm. dare to ask me something that you have no knowledge of I warn you I admonish you I advise you not to be among the ignorant Nuh السلام, did not hesitate which means that everybody that believes is his family and he immediately disbelieves prostrated to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and asked Allah to forgive him the water level was reaching now the peaks of mountains fully not only well, the Arabian Peninsula but the whole world was covered with water Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says so the ship sailed with them amidst wave-like mountains it is not this ark that saved them from these waves. It is the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the care of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that will take care of you and save you. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told Nuh to build the ark because you have to do your part. And they will stay in the ark for six months. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ordered Nuh to make dua. Oh Allah make me land on a good landing and you are the best of those who give hospitality. Allah azza wa jal for six months protected Noah and his followers in the ark and then Allah Azza wa Jal ordered the ground to swallow the water and then the flood's gone Noah alayhi salam is in the cover he doesn't know six months under the rain water from the top water from the bottom so Noah alayhi salam used to send bird he used to send a pigeon and every day that pigeon will come back with nothing so one day he sent the pigeon and he came back with a leaf from the, from an olive tree. Again, this is absolutely the same. That now the water is dry, drying. And then after that, for a few days, he sent that pigeon again. He came back with mud on his feet. So Noah realized that now the water is dry. And where did the ark stop? It stopped on a mountain called Judi. And that mountain is in Turkey. The ark, subhanAllah, was built on a mountain and landed on a mountain. See, you hardly find an And ark. yet again, if you look into certain documentaries such as Ancient Apocalypse, yet again, no, I'm not sponsored, but it was a fascinating watch. You will see that there are certain claims that the Ark of Noah has been found in Turkey. That high. Allah That's says, and we left the Ark as a sign, as a miracle. Can anyone deny this? At the time the Prophet Muhammad Wasallam, this Ark was still there and people found it and people witnessed it. People spoke about it and today they still talk about its fossils and the scientists are discovering because they know that the ark is actually still there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O Nuh, get down from the ship with peace from us and may blessings be upon you and on the people who are with you. And then Nuh alayhi salam came out with 80 people and only 80 people living on the surface of this earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala saved him and those 80 people and the rest of the animals. And Nuh alayhi salam came out knowing that there is no one living on the surface of this earth. And not only this, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made all the followers of Nuh not to have any descendants, no more children. All the descendants stopped. All the wives were barren except Nuh and his family. Okay. And that's why they know call Nuh the second Adam. Because all the descendants go back to Nuh alayhi salam, no one else. At that point, Nuh alayhi salam had three sons. What their names were? Sam or Sham, Ham and Yafid. And Nuh alayhi salam lived 350 years after, 350 years after the flood. And he passed away alayhi salam and most of the narration says he was buried in Mecca. So what's the lesson? Be patient. The end, the end result, the winners in the end are going to be who? The ones who have taqwa. The ones who will win are the believers. Nuh did win, but he won after 950 years. From the progeny of Sam, there came from him the Arabs, the Persians, and the Romans. Mm. From Yafith, there came the prosperity of the Turks, some tribe called the Sakalibas, 
and Yajuj and Majuj, Gog and Magog. And the Slavs. And from Ham, so I come from him. started the lineage of who they call the Copts, Sudanese, and the Berbers. So they're dark looking people. And from the children of Sam started to spread all the way what into the, the Arabian Asians? Peninsula and all the way to Yemen and Hadramaut. And one of the tribes, a tribe by the name of Ad comes from. And they started worshipping things, stones and items. Shirk, engaging in shirk. So Allah yeah, subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent Hud to the Ad, the people of Ad. وصلى الله وسلم وبارك على نبينا محمد سبحان الله وبحمده سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك نشهد أن لا إله إلا أنت نستغفرك ونتوب إليك Alright guys, and this is it for today's video. Absolutely fascinating ending here because you can see the shirk begins again. It is never stopping over and over again apparently. And this is what I love about the Islamic interpretation because here yet again you have a red thread, a clear explanation of people that worship one god and then they're falling off they're committing shirk yet again a messenger is sent to them he warns them some listen some don't and then they are wiped out or their civilization crumbles or what not as i said throughout the video i grew up with a very very similar story there is not much of a difference other than that we have many more details here within this story and moreover within the christian context unfortunately noah is an alcoholic he gets drunk so thank god within the islamic context we do not have noah drinking alcohol because even from the christian perspective where it is not focused on worshiping one god alone but more on the deeds of the people we have to ask ourselves the question of course if noah warns those people not to engage in their sinful behavior why would he then be drinking that wouldn't make any sense whatsoever he wouldn't be a good role model for the people all right guys but this is it for today's video if you enjoyed it leave it a thumbs up if you haven't subscribed already guys please do so and if you want to support this channel via patreon all the links are in the description box below thank you so much for your ongoing support guys as always may god bless you all much love and peace <laughs>